Hi everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'll be showing you the first five cards that I created with the Simon Says Stamp May 2019 card kit. So for card number one, I went ahead and stamped all of these images from the stamp set with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And this is an alcohol friendly ink that I can use with my Copic markers. So I will have the caps off to the side, but I'm also going to list all the colors that I use down below in case you want to color your images this way. And I'm going to show you a few of the images that I color, but then I'm not going to show anymore since I do end up using my Copic markers for all 10 cards and I didn't want to show you me coloring the same image over and over again. But I will show you the first few cards that I make with the Copic markers. And for this flower, I decided to color it in my yellow markers. And typically when I use my alcohol ink markers, I first lay down my darkest color, and then I go over that with my mid-tone, and then I go over the whole image with my lightest marker. And actually my mid-tone, the Y13, was running dry. So you will see that I go over that image several times with the Y13 since it started to look more like the Y11 which was my lightest color, and I wanted to build up the contrast. But typically, yellows are very easy to blend. And I find that the older I get, the more I like yellow. So you will see in a few of these cards, I do color my images in yellow. And I'm also going to show you the flower bud, which I decided to color in coral colors. And then I'll also show you the greenery of the flower bud. But then the other two images I will color off camera. And after that, I'm going to go over all of these images with my Wink of Stella brush. And then I'll also fussy cut all of these images. And I actually created this Wink of Stella brush myself. So once I ran out of my Wink of Stella, I refilled it up with water. And then I added Perfect Pearls in the shade Gold. And it almost looks exactly like the original Wink of Stella pen. So... I thought it was really cool and I wanted to share that in case um, you wanted to try it and if you do please let me know if you like it down below. So now off camera I did die cut a oval from my Adaris die that I had in my stash and then I stamped you are beautiful on top of the oval and then I also die cut an oval frame with the same Adaris dies and I'm going to glue that down on top of my oval with some art glitter glue. I'll place that onto my card base and then try to arrange the flowers in a way that I like. And I do end up liking that. And I thought that the white background was too plain, so I will run a uh, Daris embossing folder through my Gemini to give the white background some texture. It has kind of like a lattice design, and I thought that was really pretty. I do end up adding a lot of double-sided tape since it is embossed. I don't want to risk it um, peeling off of the card base. And this green card base I created with the cardstock that came in the kit. And now I'm going to pop up my oval with some foam tape. This foam tape is from Uline. I'm going to try to center it as best I can. And then I'm going to use a combination of art glitter glue and foam tape behind these flowers so that it is level with the oval. Okay, and that pretty much finishes the card. After I came back to it, I think like a few minutes later, I thought that it needed some Nubo drops. And I think this is um, called Rose, Rose Drops or something like that. And it's like the clear translucent kind. So I thought that was really pretty and I added that. Here's a close up. Okay, we're already moving on to card number two. So I'm going to stamp out this image from the stamp set. It was the largest flower. And I'm going to stamp it with my Versamark ink and then I'll pour some gold embossing powder over it. This gold embossing powder is from Hero Arts. It came in one of their kits in the past and it's now my favorite gold embossing powder. So if I can find it, I will link it down below. And I'm also going to stamp my sentiment which reads, you are so special to me and also gold heat emboss that. 
I did stamp my flower image onto some 110 pound Nina cardstock, which is a alcohol friendly cardstock. It's really nice for blending. And I decided to color this flower with my C markers because I wanted it to look white, but I still wanted some dimension. So that's why I am adding a little bit of gray. And every time I do this, I feel like it looks too gray and um, it doesn't look white at all. But until you add it to a card that has other colors surrounding it, it will look white and it will have some cool dimension to it. So I, when I first did this, I was pretty hesitant and now I do it all the time and most of the time I'm pretty happy with the outcome. So now I did some die cutting off camera. I cut that M from a memory box die set that I had in my stash. I cut two M's and I'm going to use the flower as the O in mom. And then I also cut a few of these frames. These are from Sizzix. I cut a white frame with, the, with two of the dies and then I used the larger of the two dies to create this vellum piece and then this cream piece. And I did run the vellum through a Swiss dot embossing folder from Cuddlebug and that's why there's some cute little dots on the vellum piece. And now I'm just kind of laying out my mom to see if I like it, and I do. So I'm going to glue down my white frame over the vellum. And I really like how the dots came out on the vellum. It gives a subtle background, but your eye is still focused on the mom, which is what I was kind of going for. So I'm going to first adhere my mom, but I will add teeny tiny strips of foam tape behind the M both M's and I did end up giving this card to my mom for Mother's Day. I think it's a cute unique way to use the kit and it was one of my first ideas when I got this kit because it was around Mother's Day when I got it so and now I'm just trying to see if I like the cream and I do end up liking the cream so I will add art glitter glue only to the spots that have the mom and the frame because if you glue it anywhere else you will see the glue um, seeping from the vellum. Now I'm just going to trim down my sentiment. I just wanted a small strip that I can place under the mom and since it was the same color as the cream cardstock that's in the background I felt like it didn't pop out enough so I will add some white cardstock behind it. But first, I wanted to add a gem to the center of the flower. And here's where I decided to add the white cardstock behind the sentiment. I did add some foam tape behind that first. And then I'll just use my scissors to cut around the sentiment. Okay, and then I'll just tuck that right under the flower in mom. And then I thought I wanted white on white and I've seen so many crafters do this and I think it's beautiful, but every time I do it, it just doesn't look good to me. So I did cut down some shimmer cardstock that is also the background down to cover my whole card base. And then I'll just add some double-sided tape to the Sizzix shape background and then just adhere it to my card base. And that will complete card number two. Okay, for card number three, I'm going to finally use the alcohol ink pearls that came in the kit. And I'll be honest, I was reluctant to use these inks, but I'm very happy that they came in the kit because I've been wanting to play with them to see if I want to buy them because they are kind of an investment, especially the Yupo paper that goes with them. So I was really happy to be using these and testing them to see if I like them. And I do. I don't think I'll buy them though just because... There's only so much you can do with them, in my opinion. I'm sure there's more that I'm just not aware of, but I still had a really fun time using these. And I'm just adding every color that came in the kit. And you create a purple color, a lime green color, so almost every color in the rainbow once you add all three of these colors together. I am using the blending solution a lot to create those circular, I guess, cells um, that are on the piece and I'm trying to fill up most of the white space but I don't really care if it's like not all completely covered 
but like I said, I am trying to get most of it covered. And I'm pretty happy with this background, and it's hard to stop because you can continue layering with these inks, and I really enjoyed them. So for the flower, I'm going to use that big flower that came in the stamp set again, and then I wanted a stem, so I'm going to use one of the leaf images and connect it with my marker so that it looks like a stemmed flower. And again, I colored it in white, and then off camera I did color the leaves as well. And I wanted to make two cards with this one background paper. So I'm going to cut a rectangle from the center and then that leaves me with a large frame. So I will be using that on the next card, but I'm going to first use that smaller frame or smaller rectangle and layer it on top of some black cardstock that I also cut from a stitched rectangle die that was slightly larger. And now I'm going to add some double-sided tape behind the black rectangle, place that directly onto my white card base, and then I decided to pop up the uh, alcohol ink background, but first I'm going to glue down my flower with my art glitter glue. And then I'm also going to stamp out my sentiment. I decided on Hello Friend, it was very small and fit perfectly on that bottom right hand corner. And I will use my VersaFine ink. This paper warps very badly, so make sure your heat tool is good and hot before you place it onto the Yupo paper because um, not for this one, but for another background I made, it warped really badly. So just keep that in mind if you do want to heat emboss on this uh, paper. And now I decided to add the foam tape and place that right over my black stitched rectangle. And that's going to complete that card after I add some sparkling sequins. This was from, I believe it was from a Simon kit previously, but I'm not totally sure. It might have been a Hero Arts kit and they were really pretty. I also added a clear gem to the center of that flower and then I used a pink alcohol ink marker to color that in. And that will complete card number three. Okay, for card four, we're going to use that leftover frame that we created and I wanted some stitched lines on this so I will run my stitched rectangle through my Gemini to get those lines on that panel. And then I'm also going to run through a slightly smaller rectangle with some black cardstock. And then I'm going to color this flower. I wanted it to be two-toned, so I wanted it to go from blue to purple to pink. So I will, again, leave all the colors that I use down below. I also have the caps up if you're interested. And um, you have to work a little bit harder to blend these colors. They're not in the same color family. So be prepared to go over the same colors a few times, but I do end up liking how this looks and I'm happy that I was able to achieve it. But like I said, I did have to go back with my blue markers and my pink markers in order to get that purple shade. Uh, Copic markers are transparent, so whatever you lay on top of it will take on the color that's below it and that's why I was able to get that purple color. So um, I only ended up using a blue two blues and two pink colors, and the purple color just came from the mixing of the two, or of the four colors, I should say. And I decided to leave this in because I've never really attempted to try to do a two-toned flower, and I just wanted to show that it is possible, you just have to work a little bit harder to get that blending to happen. And I really loved this kit and the stamp set. As you can see, you can, I've used this flower three times now. It was probably my favorite flower from the kit. But I had so many ideas with this kit. I will have five more in part two. But honestly, I could have made several more cards. I had a lot of alcohol ink left, and I think I made four or five alcohol inked backgrounds. And I still had a lot of the pattern paper left, and then of course the stamp set, so... I'm very happy with how all 10 cards came out with this kit, and I'm happy that I bought it. So it is sold out, but I will leave the stamp set below in case you want the stamp set.
okay and so my flower is done I will off camera fussy cut it and now I'm going to add some acetate behind this frame I will be making a shaker card and this card is really fun very colorful and like I said that it looks like there's pretty much every color in the rainbow on this panel so um, now I'm going to glue down my flower with my art glitter glue and now I'm going to add the black behind it I thought the black would really help the colors stand out and then I'm just going to add some foam tape this foam tape is from Uline and it's actually double mounted so it's kind of like if you were to double your scotch foam tape uh, it's already doubled up so I will try to find it from Uline and link it because I've been getting a lot of questions about this foam tape so um, like I said I'll try to link it if I can find it so now I'm just adding those sequins and now that I'm thinking of it it did come in the December Hero Arts card kit so I added a whole bunch and I like them because they didn't have a color to them I felt like if I added any more color it would have been an eyesore so um, I did decide to use those sequins and there is the shaker complete and I'm just trimming off the excess black that was hanging from the sides okay and then I'm taking my white card base all of the card bases that weren't from the kit I created with 110 pound Nina cardstock so I just added some double-sided tape and now I'm adhering it onto my card base. I'm actually struggling to adhere it onto my card base. And then I will now stamp out my sentiment. I did add a clear gem to the flower and I white heat embossed You Are So Special to Me onto some black cardstock and just trimmed it down to a strip and added it to the bottom. Here is the completed card. I am slowing it down so you can see all the shaker bits and not get a headache from the shaking. So that completes card number four. All right, so we're now on to the last and final card of part one. And this card happens to be my favorite of the 10 that I created. And it's not going to be for everyone. It ends up looking abstract. And personally, I love abstract art. So that's exactly what I was going for. And what I envisioned in my head was exactly how it turned out, which was made me very happy because as crafters, you know, that doesn't always happen. But there were a few mistakes that I'm going to leave in and show you just to show you how I fixed them. I wanted to use this stamped leaf image and I wanted it because I wanted the leaves and I'm not confident in my drawing of leaves. So I'm struggling to try to wipe off all the ink that I don't want and this first flower ends up looking okay. I do have to go over it with my Copic liner. And I just wasn't liking it. I knew I wouldn't be able to do the back or the, I guess, the middle flower. It just wasn't going to be possible. So at this point, I was going to try to hand draw them. And you really don't have to be perfect since it is an abstract look. But this flower had like two lines attached to it and I just didn't like it. So. You can erase on Yupo paper if you have rubbing alcohol. So that's what I did. And as you can see, it's a perfectly white sheet of paper and you can try again. So this time I stamped it the exact same way and I'm going to use my Copic liner just to draw lines. I'm not gonna worry about the leaves. The more abstract it looks, the better. And what was really appealing to me about the stamp set was the thin lines. So I end up really liking the stems because it does look like a very whimsical look to these flowers okay and here's mistake number two you can see how badly warped that yupa paper got so you will see how i fix that but first i'm going to add some blending solution to each of the flowers and then i'm going to drop the pink color right on top of the flowers and then i'm going to take a straw and move that color around and that's going to give me some cool looking splatters and again it's not for everyone abstract art is um, not always appreciated and I get that but honestly it's my favorite one and I'm now going to use an alcohol swab 
and I'm trying to lift up some of that color so that I get some darker and lighter tones of the pink. And then I'm just going to go over it again. So I'm adding some blending solution to each of the flowers, dropping in some more pink, and using my straw to get the splatters that I was really looking for. Okay, and then I wanted the stems to be green, but first I wanted to add some splatters with the pink alcohol ink. So um, I did add some blending solution and some of the pink color onto my glass mat, and I'm taking a paintbrush and splattering some of the pink onto my panel just to give it even more art of an artsy look. And by the way, if you want to clean this alcohol ink off of your glass mat, use rubbing alcohol. It will come off your mat. So I think this is the last time I go in with my straw. I was just having way too much fun with this. And again, it's really hard to know when to stop. But I think at this point, I'm like, okay, let's move on to the green. And same thing, I'm adding some blending solution onto those stems. And this time I'm moving the paper so that it kind of drips down. And I'm not using my straw as much because I wanted to contain the green to the stem area and not have it move over to the flower area. So um, I believe I'm done. Now I'm going to take a stitched rectangle and cut that panel down to be a little bit smaller. And I'm also going to use a larger stitched rectangle and cut some black cardstock. And then I decided on Hello Friend again. I will heat emboss that. And I do end up warping it even more. So to fix that, I will add some black fun foam behind it and I'll add a lot of tape. And that will flatten it out quite a bit. Now I'm adding it to the black stitched rectangle and then I'm going to add the black rectangle onto my white card base. And then I decided to add some more of those uh, sparkly sequins from Hero Arts. And that's going to complete card number five. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And please let me know which card was your favorite. I would love to know. And stay tuned for part two. I have the cards all complete. I just have to do the voiceover and I should have that video posted tonight. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.